Welcome to the Modern CPA Success Show, where we're 100% focused on helping accounting firms achieve success. If you're an accounting firm owner who wants to learn how to grow your firm by providing virtual CFO services, then this podcast is for you. So welcome for welcome to today. I am joined by Adam Hale, who is a partner with Andrew CPA Advisors and also Prague Kalibanan and prog worker Toucan Toko, and he's a lead generation and content manager there. So welcome to you both. Glad to be here. Thanks, Tom. So Prague, can you tell us just a little bit about your job? And then I would love to learn more about what the company can offer. Yeah, of course. Um, so in my role, I basically manage um, essentially all lead generation uh, for mm-hmm. the U.S., and any kind of content creation on all platforms, including blog, social, email, um, white papers, um, anything going forward. Um, that's the gist of it. Okay. Okay. And yeah. In terms of Toucan, um, we are a analytics company. We provide both embedded analytics and business intelligence. Um, it's basically analytics that is used for non-technical people um, that is completely guided. So there's context um, so that nobody's ever lost in terms of what they're looking at. And even if you do not completely understand all the data, there's always uh, chat, comments, glossaries to essentially guide anyone who comes to the platform. So analytics is easy for everybody to use and not really uh, gate capped. Essentially. Okay. Yeah. Seems a little bit like an oxymoron, right? Like analytics and easy to use, but um, but that I mean that's really cool. I mean, big data is a thing right now. Everybody has tons of of data, but it's not really useful information. And I know for us and our clients and and accountants everywhere, that's that's the thing is we've become storytellers. And so for us, a lot of times there's a lot of cool reports that we want to have for our own for ourselves in order to understand and tell the story. But we've got to be able to push that information out and get it to the to the users. I mean, we're still there as interpreters and we can kind of explain it. It sounds like you've got really some cool context there stuff there. So it's not like this replaces the role of the advisor. In fact, I see it like really enhancing what we do. And I think one of our biggest challenges has been taking it from like a monthly post-mortem, this is what happened, and trying to get to a point where we're able to do real-time data collection and give insights. So can you talk to me a little bit about how, how that kind of works with, with a, you know, kind of a typical client? Yeah, of course. Um, first of all, I love that you mentioned storytelling because essentially our entire platform is built on data storytelling. Mm-hmm. It's to help understand data better. Um, so for a typical client, um, we have a few accounting firms. So let's just say an accounting firm com- comes to us. There are two types of services that we can have. One is obviously an embed and one is an internal BI solution. Let's focus on the embed because it's a lot more client oriented and it's what most firms see more value with. Um, essentially what we help is give them the tools to create custom reports in a way that is easy to understand and digestible for the customer. But on top of just like creating general reports that they would want, we also take in all the data that they have and provide an essential accounting landscape so that each customer can kind of benchmark themselves um, in terms of how the industry is performing or other clients of yours are performing and see where they stand. And they can look at that information mm. at practically any time on any device. And you kind of have the ability to give them how much access you think is necessary, depending on you know the level that they have. So it's also a good monetization tool where essentially you could be like, hey, um, you can get like your basic reports that we normally give you um, at any point in time. Uh, and maybe you can charge them extra to get it in more than twice a month. Or you can also have an extra feature that a few of our clients do where they provide a full detailed analysis of where they stand compared to all the other clients that they have and kind of benchmark them uh, in terms of industry to provide a more a larger scope. And that uh, essentially is always an add-on service. And um, that's helped a lot of our clients essentially broaden their business. So you, so you kind of have a standard look and then you can customize stuff. So if I don't know what I'm looking for, you have a kind of a library of standardization, like standardized reports and things that I could, you know, compare my industry and all that kind of stuff. One of the challenges that I always find, and I'm going to pick on 
um, QuickBooks for a minute. And I think it's, I can't remember who does their dashboarding, but a lot of times whenever I think about one of our, I think one of our biggest obstacles of giving real time data is that oftentimes it still needs to be kind of combed through, you know what I mean? It's, it's incomplete and we're, we're really concerned about telling the wrong story because every, you know, whether it's people's time data, invoices aren't up to date, like the company's data isn't always up to date or the numbers that I want to show you. And this is the reason why I'm going to pick on QuickBooks is like things that are really super generic that show up on your P and L or that are your AR aging days and your AP aging days. It's not that there's not value to those things because there absolutely is, but usually the things that are the most important, those key performance indicators, those drivers of the business, sometimes they're non-financial things and other times they're non-financial things mixed with financial things. And there needs to be um, a little bit of, I guess, work to to really like multiply things out or divide things mm -hmm. or whatever that looks like, which is why I think a lot of times clients are using tools like, um, they're using things like, uh, you know, BI, Microsoft BI and stuff like that. The problem with those is they're super ugly, you know, no offense, like those things mm -hmm. just look generic. Um, so so how, how does that work with your tool whenever, how do you deal with, you know, incomplete data or whenever things have to be kind of mashed together in order to tell the story? Yeah, of course. Um, so one, we have live data connections. And what happens is uh, because our tools are built for non-technical users, you can manipulate the data that you have in the tool itself. And you don't need code to mm -hmm. do it. So if you need to compute different columns, you need to add different things, you, you want to essentially just multiply columns or even, um, let's say, set, um, section off data. You say, I only want these four columns. That's what makes sense. And I only want to represent this value or I want to add up everything. You can do any kind of computation in the analytics software itself. So you don't really essentially have to change your database. You can create just a separate vision, ver version of it for you to use. And that version also gets stored. So let's say you want to create multiple charts using this specific version that you have. You can continue to pull from that smaller uh, base that you created. And essentially anyone can do it uh, in the sense that I, as a marketer, learned it in like three weeks. So it's <laughs> very easy to operate. You're going to put yourself up as the non-technical person, right? If I can do it, then anyone can do it. A hundred percent. I, okay. one of my first projects in there was to come in and compute, um, build a plat, build essentially the application to um, show revenues for different store locations for a franchise. And they said, mm -hmm this, we need you to understand the product and we need you to believe in it. We don't want you to just write about it. We need you to know that anyone can actually do it. Uh -huh. It's pretty easy to compute your data that way. So you're not losing anything in terms of how it looks. Uh, the way we try to frame it is there are not, I wouldn't say there are specific um, um, visualizations it is more of you can put in whatever you need to in spaces that you need. So let's say you created a graph, right? And then all of a sudden this chart, you think um, you have to show the, nu the number or the average compensation that an employee gets. You think that is an important figure and you want to highlight it. You can put it as a highlighted KPI above the whole graph and you can essentially color code it to be like, hey, if it is between uh, 10 and 20, make it red. If it's between 20 and 35, mm. make it yellow, 35 up, make it green. So anybody who comes in kind of has context of, okay, this is the most important thing. We're doing okay or not, just depending on the color of what is being shown. And you can do that for any number or anything. And we also have white labeling, which essentially ensures that let's say you were presenting it as an accounting firm, right? You don't want them to feel like this is not your product. You don't want them to feel like they are going outside. So you can basically change the look and feel for your brand with the colors, designs, like how you represent yourself. So how do clients access it? Can, is there a web app? Is there a, a mobile app? Um, how does that work? Yeah, so we are a, uh, essentially our uh, application is, um, completely accessible from a web, mobile, any device that you have, you will get an essential login. So the administrator of the application can have different security levels and give access separately depending on that security levels. And if you look at it, let's say 
like you said, you don't want to, maybe the data is not complete. Maybe you think um, the data is, will be complete by the end of today. You can kind of say, okay, we will give it real time, but let's say we will only refresh it every day. So you kind of have mm-hmm. the access in the back end to do that. Or you're like, we can only make sure that they have access to just what is needed. They don't need to see all of this raw data that we have. They don't need to see every single small thing. So you can have the granular uh, version of it, but you can show them only the graphs that have the higher overview of what is necessary for them. That makes sense. So, so for the embed, can you talk a little about what a typical engagement looks like? I'm curious when people initially come to you, is it a, I've got this one question I'm trying to help you with, and then you see it expand when they see the power of the tool, or is there sort of a typical way that people tend to approach you and get started working with you? Yeah, uh, one of the, especially with accounting, uh, people mostly come to us to reduce their manual paperwork and the errors that might occur in like manual paperwork or Mm. uh, people like having to do things uh, essentially on a platform that isn't completely governed uh, by the database. Um, So mostly for human error reduction is how easily put it is what they come in for. Uh, But they always end up uh, understanding that we can do a lot more than that. And it's not just about reducing time, but it's also for us about showing more um, revenue opportunities um, and kind of expanding what they can do. Okay. So then I'm curious, one of the first things you said, Prague, was that the tool helps you look across and kind of compare yourself to others. What would you typically find in an accounting firm? What are the kind of things people are comparing? Um, yeah, looking across their data and saying, how do I stack up or how does some something stack up against other pieces? Yeah. Um, so essentially, one of the easiest examples is when we helped with Decomp um, because they had like 450 clients that were coming to them mm-hmm. specifically um, to understand how their compensation plans work and how um, their entire organization is structured. So obviously we were, they were able to provide charts and graphs um, specifically depending on, Hey, this is your average compensation plan. This is by uh, department. Uh, this is by age and essentially taking every single HR factor into consideration also. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they provided an extra service where they were like, if you want to see how you stack up in a general landscape of our clients, we can kind of show you where you average out, what you're doing well, what you're not doing well, areas of improvement. We can also show you, depending on our best performing client, uh, the difference in your organization. Essentially, if you don't want to have that generic of a view, we can just take um, companies that are in your vertical and show you where you stand regarding that. So you have a better idea of how you stack up in the industry itself. Okay, that's a great example. And where we have a niche of, lots of the same kind of clients, I could see that being valuable. And we do some comparisons that are in there, but I can see, um, I I like the opportunity of sort of also being able to upsell by saying, hey, there's more, we can look at your data. And now we can look at other people's data and give you maybe better insights. Yeah, they have, uh, the one thing we've heard, especially from uh, Deloitte is that they have, uh, they now no longer brand themselves specifically as an accounting service. Uh, They brand Mm -hmm. themselves as somebody who provides a, uh, landscape view of the industry. Oh. So they've gone from an extreme niche to saying, hey, this is everything we can do. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, I, again, for me, I think the, you know, we, we went from, you know, as an industry, I think we went from, you know, doing these historical look backs to getting a little bit more forward focused and focusing on forecasting going forward and those kind of things. Um, and then real-time reporting is still a little bit of a, of a mystery. I mean, I guess it depends on what you consider real-time. And again, data integrity is a thing. So what kind of limitations do you have in terms of, so for us, a lot of times it's, you know, we're pulling from five or six data sources and that all needs to kind of be mashed together. But sometimes there's some roadblocks with, it needs to be architected a little bit different before it goes into a platform um, like yours. So can you talk to me about any kind of limitations you have there? And are you able to take from three different sources and then do formulas on all that data in order to get that going? 
Yeah, um, the easiest answer is yes. Uh, we have data, we have live data connections to almost every database, but let's say you have a specific database that is just yours um, that you know you want security governance over. We also have a special API that can connect to your database. And instead of uh, duplicating data, we can just pull from it so that there's no uh, security leaks or security breaches in that sense, if that's something of concern. And you can combine as many databases as you want. And that's where the um, ability to compute in the application itself comes in. So no matter how many databases you pull in, as long as it's structured as rows, and as long as there's one unique identifier where you can like, you know, if you need to connect different uh, uh, tables together or something like that, right? Yeah, records. Yeah. If you need to connect different records, uh, see how they inter intertwine and things like that, that is completely uh, possible. Um, like a great example would be uh, Alliance Euros in Europe, uh, where they have 40, 42 different um, accounting practices, essentially, just under their umbrella. And we kind of connect all 42 of their records to provide any single application that goes out just with their one particular uh, company name. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, for some e-commerce clients, they have a lot of KPIs that drive their business, uh, even, you know, other clients that have job profitability reports that need to get pulled, you know, maybe they're coming from different data sources, like maybe they have a time tracking sheet. And then do you have any limitations on the accounting software that you're working with? Like, is it just QBO or zero or, I mean, can you use NetSuite, Intact and, and one-off proprietary softwares? Um, you can essentially uh, connect with almost all the major softwares. Uh, with the one-off softwares, we kind of have to just look into if they are willing to share their database. So essentially, if you have a database, we will be able to connect it because we have a custom API for any kind of connection. Like think of it as, um, as Zapier, if you're familiar with Zapier, mm -hmm. where yeah. it will help you connect with anything that you need to connect it with. So any kind of sheet, any kind of, uh, module different kinds of sources to put all your data into one. So we kind of have our custom API connection too for databases. So we are essentially able to connect to almost any database that is available. Okay. Are you interested in offering virtual CFO services at your firm or scaling your existing service offerings? The Virtual CFO Playbook, How to Land $60,000 a Year Clients and Provide a Killer Client Experience is an online series of modules that will equip you with essential tools for creating and delivering scalable VCFO services. These approaches have helped Summit CPA grow from $500,000 to upwards of $5 million in revenue over the past decade. If you're ready to grow your firm, visit summitcpa.net slash VCFO playbook to enroll now. Early on, Prague, you talked about storytelling. I'd love to hear a little bit more about how you tell, I mean, everyone says you should be telling story and I think accountants especially are not good at doing that. We want to, but aren't very good at it. How do you think your tool differentiates you and, and how do you try to tell stories with the data? Yeah, of course. Um, so apart from just, you know, um, finding the data or like even those HKPIs that I was talking about where you can kind of see what is happening in, in an initial glance, mm -hmm. uh, what we also really believe is to provide context. So, one is we have a feature where you can segregate your different reports. So like, obviously you can have a particular story that only talks about, um, that only talks about, let's say um, your comp plans, a particular story that only talks about um, your uh, SaaS clients. So you can differentiate that way, but internally in a particular um, visualization, um, you have the ability to put in tips. You have the ability to put in highlights. You have the ability to add in, uh, drop downs where it'll essentially explain what you're looking at. And even before somebody gets into a graph, um, you can have, if it's like their first time using it or if they've kind of come in like refreshed and come in, logged out, come back in, there'll be like a um, translucent screen on top of your graph and a small text which can explain mm. how to use this graph or what this graph would essentially represent. So the person knows exactly how to use it or how to uh, get the information they need from uh. it. Okay. And we also have a glossary section on the side, which can kind of explain whatever is needed. So they are never, you know, let's say they have a particular, uh, you've written um, a particular term that somebody cannot understand. It's right there in the glossary section. So people kind of understand what essentially is going on in the full landscape. 
Okay. Would it, the way you use the graph, would it even allow someone to put in a notes about a particular report? If I want to make a comment that this month was particularly good because hours were up and our average bill rate was higher driven by one particular project. Is that something that people can put in there and then someone's looking at the graph and saying, oh, I see the big jump and I can see a little explanation of how someone's telling me what that's supposed to describe? Yes. Um, so essentially, uh, you cannot put it in, in the graph, but we have a comment section right on the okay. side where you can add in a comment section, tag people who are uh, who have access to that particular uh, visualization, and they can then come in and ask any kind of question they want. Okay. Or inversely, let's say if one of your clients has a question, they can they can annotate and then share the graph with you. So they can kind of like in the application itself, um, go to the annotate feature and circle whatever they need to and be like, hey, why is there a spike here? Or, oh, can you explain what is happening in this particular area of the graph? And you can just essentially talk there or they can push it to Slack if they need to or send it to you via email, any kind of way that they can communicate with you. Okay. How does that get archived, I guess? Because one of the challenges that we've had with some of that stuff is obviously if the graph is kind of a living, breathing, continual thing, you know, you're making comments this week, like Tom's example, he mentions, hey, we did this, this, and this, great. Um, but then next week the graph changes and everything that he said there isn't applicable. Does it archive those? Is there like a time print or how does that work? Yeah, so we uh, essentially have filters for everything, and you can also have a filter for the time frame uh, of how you want the graph to see. So if you if you see somebody has used this particular time frame, you can use the same time frame, um, put that in as a filter, and the graph would be exactly as the other person has seen it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I I think those features sound really good. I. I'm guilty of the same thing. We've got some great information, but I think there are times where I can send someone a report and it might be 30 pages long with a bunch of graphs. And I probably know most of them pretty well because it's my world I live in, but I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised that many clients get them and look at them and go, don't know what this is supposed to be telling me. And having some of those comments, I think could be really useful. Oh, let's be honest, Tom, you're looking at them and go, what the heck does this say? So if it gave you a little bit of a head start, that would be great. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's like, oh, there's okay. one or two I might know. Good that's point. what it's saying. Oh, God, yes. check. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I tease, but uh, yeah. uh, no, I mean, I think, um, you know, we've, we've kind of talked about it over the last year or two, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of growth in this area, but the data visualization is, is key, you know, turning again, this data into information and then doing it in real time in a meaningful manner. And it sounds like, you know, the product kind of hits in on all that stuff, but um, I'm, I'm an accountant. So I'm always, you know, I, I would say, so money always comes to mind. And, and I would tell you that we have probably, it feels like kind of like my, um, my, streaming services at home you know you have netflix and then you have disney and then you have you know like so you get like before long you have 20 different subscriptions that you're subscribing mm -hmm. to to watch watch television um kind of feel that same way as a professional in in this industry now it went from you know buying a software that tries to do everything to like oh cool now i can get access um, so talk to me about how that works. Is it like a per client fee? Is it a per user fee? How does that, uh, you know, do you get unlimited users for the client? Like, so if it's a, if it's the client feed or is it client fee plus users, can you talk to me about how that works? Yeah, of course. Um, so there, obviously the, uh, pricing varies depending on if it's BI or embed. So if you take embed, it is, uh, by number of users. Okay. Uh, but if you take it as BI, it is a client fee. Okay. So the difference being BI would be for just if you were trying to use it singularly for yourself, whereas embed is more for like what most accountants would do. And so that would be per user. So if I had a client that wanted 15 people on their leadership team to, to, view different dashboards and i assume you could probably set them up as their own different dashboards then you would be paying per user for each one of those those users um, typically yes so it also depends on uh the scale obviously let's say you just sure. have a lot like with with alliance euros we ha they have like 42 different uh, companies that they kind of manage in terms of accounting where all the data comes in. So it's much harder to do uh, by user in that particular case, uh, but because each user is going to change. So it's kind of a range more than anything else. So like it's going to be a range of users depending on how much it goes by, but 
um, yeah, uh, you can like increase, decrease at any point in time, depending on how you feel. Um, you can even um, say a company, let's say you are going to, uh, you were working with a company, you can just say this company gets three logins or three accesses for how much they would be paying you. Because essentially, um, it would be an added benefit that you can continue to charge for also. So that's how we look at it. And that's the reason that we charge by user for okay. embed. So if I told you that my, my, my business model is that I work with clients on a weekly, semi-monthly or monthly basis, um, and my number one goal is to help them provide you know, financial clarity, get deliberate with their business. So I'm building a dynamic forecast for them that's built on the KPIs that drive their business. You know, I'm trying to help them be profitable, build cash in the bank, those kind of things. Um, and by building a dynamic forecast, again, I'm talking about KPIs, you know, the things that are really driving the business. What would you recommend? I mean, like, what what does that look like? Why would I want to use this service? You know, for anybody listening, because a lot of folks that listen to this uh, podcast are in a very, they have a very similar business model, you know, trying to be that advisor. And we're trying to be more and more relevant, obviously, and the relevance is also timeliness in some of these instances. And we're feeling a lot of pressure to be able to provide these things in real time with a little effort. So talk to me about how this product would be good for me. Like what, what, what problems are you going to solve by if I deploy this kind of software? Right. Uh, so right off the bat, let's say there are 10 important KPIs that are important for your the business you're working with. We have the initial dashboard, which I feel like I forgot to mention. Uh, it's a front dashboard that you can have tiles in that provide all of these important 10 KPIs. And right as they look at this dashboard, they'll be able to understand how their business works because that's what it's dependent on. And let's say um, they look at um, revenue generated and they all of a sudden want to dig deeper into how it works. The tile will link to one of the graphs that you've created. It doesn't have to, but it can essentially link to the graph so they can get a deeper view or an insight. If they're happy with how the performance is working, um, they don't have to really dig deeper. And the dashboard itself can be filtered by location, uh, by month, uh, by year to date, like any kind of filter can be applied on the entire dashboard also. Does the dashboard have drill down capability into the data? Uh, so the dashboard, so essentially the dashboard can link to one of the graphs that would have, that would be more drill down. So okay. the dashboard wouldn't get okay. into drill down itself, but it would go into a visualization that is related to that particular tile that you've created. Oh, okay. So it just tells the story a different, you know, visualization a different way, you know, like you said, and a little bit of a drill down into it. Okay. But not to the point where it shows the raw data or does it also, can you also do a lot of tables then I take it, you know, a lot of that can just be table formatted. And then that's whenever you're saying you can click into the table and it creates these, you know, it can go into these graphs that are linked to it to give them a little bit different view. Yeah, um, to explain it better, it's more of tiles. So you can kind of place the tiles individually. You can kind of section them off. Uh, you can have a certain section for revenue. You can have a certain section for comp plans. You can have a certain section for um, other metrics about um, the employees. So you can have different sections with different tiles. Um, you can make one tile bigger, whichever is essential to you. You can have the tile only show um, the highlighted um, KPI that you want to. You can have the tile show like a small little graph that goes for the, the just to understand the timeline. You can have it show an image. You can have it show text. You can have it essentially show anything you need it to show. Okay. So now I'm talking to Tom and I just listened to this podcast. And again, I'm just like, Tom, this is great. Real time dashboarding connects right in there. Tom's got, uh, he's got tool fatigue. <laughs> you know, I've, I've shown him 20, you know, shiny objects over the last year sure. and he's just like, settle down. What is the one thing that I say to him to kind of convince him? Like, no, I think this is kind of the tool. What's, what's the biggest value add from your perspective? The biggest value add is the fact that this tool will help generate more business while being able to sit on top of all the other tools. So I can kind of sit it and forget it for the most part. Like I can build it and it'll kind of work for itself. I don't have to do a whole yeah. lot of mining or, or dressing things up. I can just kind of 
grab and go if I want to. Yeah, essentially, as long as you have all your graphs and dashboard set up and the data is coming in, there's nothing that you need to specifically do. You can filter it as you want to, and it basically will sit on top of any other tool that you have that has a database. So um, you can visualize the data that you have in different tools without having to go into them. And can I create a library of the reports that I built so that I can just easily apply them to the next client? So yes. like once I've built a graph, it's in my library and I can just kind of throw that out between all my different clients. If I'm like, oh, that's cool. That'd be interesting to see across the board. I can do that pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah. Just depending on governance and authorization, you can build a graph and that particular graph that you build can be shown to as many clients as you need to. And uh, because our uh, app itself is responsive, it can go onto any device. Like you can even like fully display it on a TV screen for a, uh, a meeting, let's say that you're having in a conference room, you can fully throw that graph up there and have it on the TV and it'll adapt. Yeah, the one other, and this may be an area to close, kind of closing with how people get started. Um, Adam and I do a lot of coaching and consulting with other firms, and many of them are fairly small firms, probably less than 10 people. In addition to tool fatigue, often they talk about kind of the startup fatigue that I know I should be investing my time in a reporting tool and a forecasting tool and things, but I'm one person, I'm not that technical, so it just takes a long time. When people want to go with, say, the embed product with you, sort of what does that initial beginning look like? And how does someone get over that intimidation of, okay, there's probably a bunch of websites I'm trying to read, but I'm going to be connecting databases and I'm an accountant. Can you talk a little bit about how someone gets up to speed and what that looks like? Yeah, of course. Uh, one is we always have our customer success team, especially in the onboarding process to help with anything needed. Mm -hmm. uh, they're one of the best response, res most responsive teams, like uh, we're highest rated G2 for that particular reason too. Uh, but on top of that, we have uh, online learning courses where it is like a visual way of showing it to you. So you don't have to like read things as much as you can like watch and do as they're okay. going. And the other thing is when I was talking about contacts and uh, we essentially have recently launched the guided analytics uh, methodology where let's say you are in the application, you're new, you've just watched a video, uh, but it's it's still a little hard to follow along, right? Mm -hmm. So when you get in, it is going to prompt you. It's going to be like, would you like to build a story? Click here. And then once you click in, it's going to be like, would you like to connect your data? And it'll kind of guide you to where mm -hmm. you click to connect your data. So it's easier even from the builder side. So that's essentially what we're trying to uh, get to is like when I talk about non-technical analytics, it's really from the building process. It's not just for people looking uh, or like just looking at the answers or visualizations. It's even to build, it's pretty easy. Our general deployment is anywhere between two to four weeks where you can get up and running. Okay. Okay. Oh, Interesting. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So where should people reach out if they're, if this piques their interest, which it certainly has piqued mine and they say, I want to learn more about this. How do I get started? What's the, where should they be going to try to connect? Of course, um, just on to www.toucantoco.com. And uh, we have a, a demo request there. Uh, feel free to sign in for a demo. That's the easiest way to, you know, just better see, understand the application and for us to understand your needs. And uh, then that's how we will get started. Okay. And Toucan Toco is T-O-U-C-A-N-T-O-C-O, -O, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. A any final thoughts, Prague? This has been really interesting to learn about and, and sounds like an exciting tool. Um, no, I'm just uh, more than excited to share this particular opportunity and this tool that we have because I don't think we get to talk to accountants as much uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, just from going to events, going to things that I've gone to. We've gotten to talk a lot more of the SaaS industry, but accounting has always been where we are only able to reach out to larger clients and it's become excessively harder to get, I think the attention span of a, a smaller client, attention span mm -hmm. of like smaller businesses, because they just think that everybody's out there to sell to them. And that sure. most tools provide the same value, if not the, if not worse <laughs> than what they might already have. <laughs> so I think that is one hub that we're just hoping to get over. And I hope this helped uh, people kind of understand that. That's excellent. Well, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Of course. Yeah, thank you so thank much you. for having me.
Enjoy this podcast? Visit our website at summitcpa.net to get more tips and strategies for achieving modern CPA firm success. We're here to be a resource in this ever-changing industry.